Days Gone is a PlayStation exclusive that I personally had no interest when the trailer was released way back in 2016. The visuals are great and the premise for some may have definitely seemed intriguing, particularly the execution of the hordes. But at the time, I'll be honest, my eyes were very closely fixated on the groundbreaking release of God of War, which was ultimately released in 2018, which even today is one of my favorite games of all time. So because of that, Days Gone slipped under my radar for the longest time and I'm someone who plays PlayStation Studio games very, very soon. The other reason I shied away from the title was because, I'll be honest with you guys, I simply don't like horror games. The idea of playing a game to be scared just brings no joy to me at all. I avoid horror games like a plague. Now, of course, there are a few horror games which I've made an exception for, or thriller, whatever you want to call them, zombie apocalypse games, that I've made an exception for. Namely, The Walking Dead Telltale and The, the Last of Us. Uh, those are two, I would say, unforgettable gaming experiences. Even if you're someone who's not a fan of the genre, those are games that you cannot miss. So it's just not a genre that I've been personally interested in because of those reasons. But for some reason, I finally made the decision to go ahead and give Days Gone a try. I'm someone who regularly scrolls through the PlayStation Store and I said, you know what, let's give it a damn shot. And oh man, ever since I held onto those handlebars, I haven't let go. Now, Days Gone is an open-world, zombie apocalypse action-adventure game. <laughs> Quite a mouthful, definitely for sure. Mm. Bend Studios have whipped up their own crockpots of zombies with the Freakers. Now, there are many types of these Freakers and this infection has been spread even to the wildlife. You play as the gruff, emotionless biker Deacon St. John. A little bit of a ridiculous name because uh, he's definitely far from being a saint but perhaps that was the irony that they were looking for. Alongside Booza and the many companions you'll meet throughout your journey, I'd have to say the crux of the story is obviously surviving the damn zombie apocalypse, but the other focus is definitely finding your long lost wife who you lost in the very beginning of the ordeal. So the question for those who haven't played the game, is Days Gone good? Did I personally enjoy Days Gone? The answer to both of those questions is yes and yes, which is a pretty good sign. Days Gone is a good game, but it's not a great game. I will discuss those flaws incrementally throughout the video as I discuss why this game falters at multiple moments. Usually there's an issue with one particular aspect of the game, but I'd have to say that Days Gone has flaws scattered in the entire experience. Now because of those reasons that I've listed, I'd say it's pretty easy and pretty obvious that Days Gone is a double A or mid-tier game. Now despite these flaws, the game is definitely enjoyable and you'll probably be satisfied with the experience. But to be honest, you would probably have been a lot happier if the game ended about 40 hours earlier. Like most open world games, it falls into the typical trap of pursuing quantity over quality. This is usually the case with optional open world content, but the repetitive missions and perpetual busywork is littered throughout the main campaign, unfortunately making these issues unavoidable. Instead of moving accordingly to the next story beat, the story will unfortunately drag and out of nowhere you'll get a generic bounty hunt mission, a generic ambush camp, or you'll be sent on on a wild goose chase to find some useless piece of equipment that will progress the story in some minuscule way. 
Now, most of these missions are great the first and second time around, but once you're being sent to get another scalpel to get another styrofoam cup for the sixth or seventh time and fighting a horde while you have to do that, it definitely gets annoying. Now, this repetition can definitely be problematic as someone who's used to playing open world games as they've definitely, unfortunately, oversaturated the entire gaming market. But the game has definitely implemented things to kind of dilute and distract you from these issues, namely the beautiful, beautiful setting of Oregon and your mode of transportation, the bike. <laughs> The wilderness of Oregon is a beautiful playground to explore. As you burn rubber with your bike and as you conquer these freaker infested lands, the more attached you become to this beautiful location out in the sticks. It must be refreshing to even those who are used to playing horror and zombie games as the setting is finally not restricted to compacted city blocks in New York or Chicago in LA. Instead, you'll find freakers and zombies in cabins, tourist hotspots, and just wandering around the night sky on the mountain pass. Beauty and tragedy so perfectly mixed together. You rip through these lanes with a bike that is pivotal to your survival out in the shit, as they would say it in the game. It holds ammo, it's a light source, and most importantly, the horsepower that's the difference between life and death. The bike will be key to transporting you to multiple game safe zones known as camps, run by many people of differing personalities, trying to keep a semblance of humanity alive. Doing jobs of them is what keeps you alive and makes you a competent drifter. But most importantly, if you're suddenly swarmed by a horde and the situation gets a little bit too hot, your bike becomes your source of escape. The combat I'd say the combat is decent. It's, it's far from the best combat system you've ever experienced, but it's good enough for you to enjoy it. Especially as you get more weapons, unlock focus, the depth widens. If you're looking for a comparison to other games in the genre, the gunplay is definitely weaker than something, for example, as The Last of Us or even a GTA V. But I'll be honest, the combat variety is much more diverse as there's plenty of uh, different weapon types, plenty of different traps, consumables, and even distractions and grenades that you can use throughout the story. If we're talking first impressions though, the gunplay was disappointing, but it did eventually grow on me. Now it may seem that I'm talking quite a bit negatively about this title, but I'm actually letting a few of its flaws slide because I'll be honest, the overall experience was really enjoyable. I'm talking about these flaws, but you're probably going to look past them because the story, the action, the gameplay, the entire package really, really grows on you. Now before I mentioned that Days Gone falls into the usual traps of uh, quantity over quality, and this is definitely felt in the pacing of the story. This is probably Days Gone's biggest issue. At too many moments, you'll feel that the story has completely lost its focus or it never had focus in the first place. The story at many points will feel disjointed. There are simply too many storylines being tackled at once and by the end of it all, only a few of them get solved to a satisfactory level. Now also adding the boring repetitive open world busy work, the game is artificially lengthened unnecessarily. And there are honestly some storylines that should have been cut out entirely. Or if you really want to input these storylines into the story, they should have been introduced way, way earlier in the tale. Despite all of these flaws, I definitely have to commend how the story was presented in the cutscenes. If we're talking about the great voice acting, every single person that was involved in this title hit it out of the park. Everyone was professional and it absolutely felt authentic. I felt like every single character was a real person. The animations with the cutscene. When you went into a cutscene, I was excited because everything is so well executed. Nothing feels sloppy. Everything went through quality control and because of that, the story definitely did a good job of being immersive. If we're talking about aspects of this game that definitely feel AAA, the cutscenes are definitely one of them and PlayStation Studios as a whole, all of these guys know how to make a good cutscene. Days Gone boasts a good upgrade system as well. As you play, you get experience, but upgrading your health, stamina and focus is directly tied to you visiting locations spread out in the map. 
Now the game also does things to restrict your progress intentionally using the trust mechanic that's implemented at every single camp in the game. There were many points in the game where I found myself frustrated that I couldn't upgrade my bike, weapons or anything else because I hadn't built enough trust in the camp. And the thing is, I had the money so it became quite frustrating to see something they weren't going to give me just because they don't damn trust me. And the thing is, is that I couldn't even upgrade that trust because I'd done all the jobs that were available to me at the time. Now ladies and gentlemen, you know this is a patient gamer review, so I have to give you guys a value section. In terms of price, gameplay time and every other factor that I can think of, is this game worth your buck and worth your time? Let's get right into it in the value section. We're going to start right off with how long to beat and consider how much gameplay time you're going to be getting from this title. Now in terms of gameplay time, you're going to be getting 36 and a half hours of gameplay time if you only do the main story and if you do some of the side content, it says about 50 and a half hours. I'll be honest with you, if you're going to do a significant amount of the side content, I'd say most of it, you're probably going to get a bit more because I was around like 60 something hours and there was still plenty of content that was still left over for me to do. So I think these numbers that are right here on how long to be a little bit uh, low on the lower side, you're definitely going to get a lot more play time. And as I said before, if you're someone who's going to play this game, you probably would have been happier if the game ended many, many hours earlier. The game unnecessarily just adds plot points again and again and again. If you're going to be procuring Days Gone over on PC, if you're going to buy it today, the current prices on official stores is $40.83. If you're going to purchase it through a key shop, you can get it for $9.09. .09. This is over on PC. Now, if you're willing to wait for a sale, which I recommend you do at all times, via official store, whether it's Steam, Epic Store, whichever is your video game store on PC of choice, the lowest that has gone is for $9.29, which expired pretty recently, it's six days ago. So if you look out for sales for these type of games, you'll definitely be able to enjoy yourself. If you're over on the PlayStation 4, currently the lowest you can get it for is $39.99, pretty much a 40. If you're willing to wait for a sale, which I definitely recommend you do, you can go ahead and get it for $16. And if you're over here in South Africa, the lowest price you can get it for if you wait for a sale is 287 Rand and 60 cents. I recommend all you guys to buy games like this, especially if they're older titles, get them on a sale and save you a few bucks. But I'll be absolutely honest with you, probably the best way for you to play Days Gone is on PlayStation Plus. If you go ahead and get PlayStation Plus Extra, the one that includes the catalogue of games with the subscription, you can play Day Days Gone today immediately. I'd definitely say go ahead and get that. If you own yourself a PlayStation console, this is a great way for you to pick up Days Gone. And if you don't like it, you can drop it and play another title. It is what it is. Now, in conclusion, Days Gone is a good game that adds a unique twist to what's an oversaturated genre. Adding the open world and survival elements and a damn bike all ingredients making this game a success. While Days Gone is clearly flawed, I enjoyed myself and I was surprisingly hooked. Every day I would hop onto this after work and I wouldn't even play online with the homies because I'm like, nah, I'm gonna play Days Gone because I'm having a damn great time playing this. Now, it's a shame that a sequel isn't on the way because if they could just trim the fat, add a bit more polish and smoothen out the mechanics and make the game shorter, make it more focused, I can see this game being absolutely sensational and competing with other very well established game series. Now if you want a rating from me, yeah, it's going to be the cliche IGN rating, it's a 7 out of 10. Days Gone is a good game, it's really really good. It's not a great game, it's not exceptional, it's not a masterpiece, it's a great game. It's a double A title that is surprisingly well executed and it actually pushed me and shied me away from some triple A games that are chilling in my catalogue. I went and played Days Gone and I had a great time. Days Gone revitalized some of the love that I have for gaming and it reminded me why I enjoy this space and the genre so much. I enjoyed myself for Days Gone and I would recommend anyone who hasn't played it and is thinking about playing Days Gone, go ahead and play it. If you're someone who's used to the zombie genre, perhaps the open world elements, perhaps using the bike as a survival mechanic and playing and riding burning rubber on the open road is a pretty cool mechanic that's going to be refreshing to someone who's already played all these types of games. Days Gone is a decent title and I'd recommend it to anybody. 
So, my name is Explicit Sage and I thank you for joining me once again for another Patience Gamer review.